In today's video, we are going to talk and show you uh, how we can help you from a Salesforce CPQ and a NetSuite suite billing integration. As part of what we're going to demo, we are going to show you Salesforce CPQ. We are going to talk through the Saligo integration and how that integration supports uh, CPQ to NetSuite. And then we're going to go through the NetSuite suite billing. And I will turn it over to John. Thanks, Matt. Um, so here we're in Salesforce. We will start on the opportunity. Um, we have an account for University of Arizona with, that we've created an opportunity for, and we've progressed through to the proposal and price quote uh, opportunity stage, and we've created a primary quote. And so I'll show you uh, some of the details around uh, when this will start and the products that have been added. So if we go to the edit lines on this quote, we can see that we've added uh, two products, one for a quick start implementation with a preset amount of hours for um, a, a project manager and a solution consultant. And those are you know, rolled up, included in the price of this bundle, which can be edited or configured to add uh, more hours you know, per, per role. And then a second product, which is the managed services with a level of support for silver. You know, if we wanted to update the level of support to gold or bronze for uh, a different level, we can do that. So we also have the start date of the subscription product for this silver ongoing support uh, being May 1st and the end date being uh, two years, 24 months uh, to that date. So once the quote is you know, approved by management and accepted by the customer, uh, the, then we can order or create an order off of this quote, either by checking the order checkbox or creating an order here and filling out the required fields. We have some fields that are added you know, through the Soligo package with the Soligo start date and we also have that billing account, which will be pulled in from the opportunity. So if I go to the order that I've created, we'll be able to see that order start date and the Saligo start date pulled from that quote start date, as well as the NetSuite billing account. And we have the order products pulled over from the quote lines. And once this is, this will be pulled in draft status and we can go ahead and activate the order. And this will initiate the trigger to a NetSuite. Now, uh, before I hand it over to Trevor, I just wanted to cover um, how contracts can be created off of the order or opportunity and the underlying products that are subscription types and where those can be, where they're stored and can be managed. So uh, once that order is activated, we can then uh, start the contract and activate that. And we can do that by either marking the checkbox for contracted um, or uh, creating a new contracted related to this uh, order or uh, opportunity. So if we go to natively behind the scenes, when once that check checkbox is marked on the order, then the contract is created with the start and end date and we have the related subscriptions uh, for that silver support level product. And from here uh, on the contract, uh, we can create opportunities for renewal or amendment and quotes for those renewals or amendments and, and better manage 
uh, when subscriptions needed to be uh, increased or decreased, decreased in quantity um, or uh, new products added. And with that, I'll hand it over to Trevor. Yeah, thanks, John. All right, so while I boot up my screen here, so for those that aren't familiar with NetSuite Suite Billing, Suite Billing is NetSuite's answer to the movement to a subscription economy, right? So uh, using Suite Billing, you're going to be able to do things like standard or customer specific price plans with volume, tiered or flat pricing modules. Um, you'll also be able to use usage-based or consumption-based billing with, with Suite Billing. Uh, and, and the key there is that we can also extract that information from external systems. So whether you have a proprietary system where a user is entering in, say, say how many licenses they want for their software, or maybe they're doing it through the customer portal within Salesforce, we can bring that information into NetSuite to help automate billing. Uh, and also it's meant to streamline your recurring subscription billing. Um, so whether you use uh, CPQ or sweet billing itself for those renewals, right? those systems will talk to each other using Soligo's iPaaS solution here that we've built. Um, but again, more importantly and overall, right, we're trying to manage a subscription lifecycle with flexible change orders. And then again, that seamless integration here. Uh, so the first transaction type that I will be showing here is a sales order. And this is going to act uh, similar to your native sales orders within NetSuite. It can come over from Salesforce with uh, different statuses. So this one right here is in, it's in pending approval, but we can see again using that Soligo integration, uh, our Salesforce ID to track back into Salesforce. Um, so much like what John um, what John just showed, we have our items here, our, our subscription, which is more, more important, right? So we have our silver uh, managed services as well as our quick start implementation. When I go into those subscriptions, this is where you can manage things like your pricing. So this is where the, the pricing might be a tiered based. Again, because it's coming over from Salesforce, maybe it's just going to be a set amount and not necessarily driven by anything within NetSuite here. But again, we can see that the integration uh, keyed over this subscription as well. And what sits within that subscription, um, in this case for the University of Arizona, are both the price books and then the subscription plan. So this is what's going to drive uh, billing schedules, right? So how do you bill um, these subscriptions? So both the, the subscription plan and price book will help determine that. But you can see here the plan and term, this is again that initial term of two years with those start and end dates that match uh, what we had within um, CPQ, Salesforce CPQ. I also do wanna to touch on our billing accounts. Um, so this is going to sit with any customer record uh, where for a single customer, you can have multiple billing accounts, um, right? This is going to be very important. If, if I use, for example, my University of Arizona, maybe they have a subscription for one department and then for another department, and you have to bill these multiple departments. Um, maybe it's even differently that you need to bill them, right? So those billing accounts can help differentiate uh, within your customer um, how they're getting sent invoices. So I have my billing account for University of Arizona's billing corporate account. You can see here what their default billing schedule should be. Uh, under related records here, we can see all the subscriptions that we're managing for this billing account. The billing schedule, this is going to show both uh, the, the invoices that were triggered historically, as well as those that are yet to be triggered here. And then you're also going to be able to do things like add in off cycle requests, right? If they have to add in licensing or, or if there's a base charge, that you need to add for, for going over a certain amount, right? So you can add those charges within the billing account here. And I also do, I just, I did mention the subscription plan here. I have that open in this tab. You can see that this is what's going to be built as that subscription package, right? So these are, the, this is going to be to say that implementation with some hours for your project manager and consultant, and then also your managed services plans uh, in this example. Right, and here you you would also say your your default billing schedules. Um, what happens with, when we're renewing, right? So are we always renewing the managed services package, but implementation is a one-time fee where we don't need to include that in a renewal subscription. All of that's controlled within our subscription plan here. Uh, when we are managing those changes, so again, those changes can be managed within CPQ or within Suite Billing for NetSuite. Uh, you're going to be able to track the subscription change orders using this view. Uh, you would also be able to track the renewals using Suite Billing as well, as well as CPQ. 
Uh, but again, this is to provide that that insight to where all of your subscriptions are in their life cycle. So that seamless piece. Um, just like most of NetSuite, right? You can automate uh, billing operations to have these invoices scheduled out. Um, so it is quite uh, robust when it comes to uh, the, the managing of the invoices, right? So it's really the subscription uh, items and subscription plans that are going to be the key um, to having that 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 seamless seamless billing here. Um, and with that, right, I'll I'll, provide, I'll I'll swing this back over to Matt to wrap it up. Okay, great. So if there's any interest in learning more, uh, please reach out to us. Thank you very much.